Everybody, welcome. This is Burbank. Guess where we are? Woohoo! First time in the studio. We have Sean working the boards. Tony's here. I'm Gam Bruno, your host, Between the Sheets podcast. Okay, we are on the first and third Friday of every month, except for this month. So I'm finding out that the show's going to sort of fluctuate when my work schedule fluctuates because I haven't really worked on the set in a long time. So now we're just going to have to punt. So keep, um, you know, be. Uh, be a friend be a friend of ours on facebook um so you'll hear all the new like changes if anything comes up um follow me on instagram qte brett um hey this is just so freaking weird i mean it's like oh my god i have to pinch myself um happy kind of post covid um let's see you can call us call us now more than ever because i know it was kind of clunky and stuff on um when we were on zoom but um 323-524-2599. Hey, Sean, you can fade out now. Thank you. We're just having fun here. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Sean. That was a big uh, fade, That Sean. was a big fade. It was like, uh, on to, fuck it off. It's off. It's just off. There's no yeah, anything in between. Fuck her. She's a bitch. Um, but uh, three, please call us. 323-524-2599. Um, Let's see, who do we have tonight? Do, 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 do. do I go to the right? Do I go to the left? Um, actually, I'll start with Zoom. Cheryl Murphy. Oh. <laughs> How about it? Hi, guys. Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, everyone. You guys look so sharp. I mean, that is a new studio. It looks brand new. I mean, I just can't tell you how beautiful you guys look tonight. Thank well, you. Thank so you, do you. you. You do too. Thank Whatever you. your lighting is, is fabulous. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay. To my far right, because they the way they have it is like the, the view or the talks. This is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Is Cara Noble. Oh, it's me. It's you. I'm, I'm looking at the screen. No <laughs> pointing in that direction. I'm like, oh, hello. Oh, my God. Hello. This is so much fun. <laughs> This is so much fun. This is like real life. I know. Like we're back. It's, it's yes. bizarre. Fantastic. Um, let's see. We have to the far left. Oh. Even though it looks to the right, it's to the far left. Um, you know what? We're in the studio now, so it's Tristan. Um, oh, no. <laughs> but oh, Ro oh but Roxanne Rosen <laughs> is here. Get it right. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then to my other right, my nearer right, my sister. Well, I have two sisters here, but my other sister from another mother, um, Amara Shane. Hello. Hello. Mm. This is fantastic. The studio was redone and it is amazing. I'm so overjoyed to be back here. I know. It's amazing. It's yes. like weird. Okay. Now. I know I said it's Listener Appreciation Month. I, I made that up. Um, <laughs> I really totally made it up. Um, I, you know, there's one person besides that she's one of my closest and dearest friends. Um, she consistently calls the show and supports the show and actually doesn't call up to go, hey, it's, you know, she has something to say. She listens. She pays attention. Um, sometimes we don't even pay attention. What the hell is she saying? Where, where was she? Um, but I do want to introduce... Um, for tonight, guest co-host, Joe Papadonitz, right? Right? Yes. Close enough? Yeah, I usually call her Joe P. Uh, and in my phone, it's Joe P. But we have another special guest tonight. Um, Joe just rescued a little baby. Um, oh. she's had him for three days. Oh. And this is Alan. So Alan is in the studio tonight. So let's welcome Alan, a rescue from Santa Monica. The Santa Monica oh. shelter, right, Joe? Hey, yeah. baby. And this was um, on behalf of Shannon O'Reilly that posted all over Facebook her rescue dogs. Oh. And I got lucky to happen to get Alan. 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 Uh, so now, why, now, okay, why is he named Alan? Yes. There's a documentary, and I know, Cara, you probably have seen it, of a little prairie dog. Yes. Uh, there's a clip that goes throughout the documentary of a prairie dog standing on its ha hind legs going, Alan. 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 Oh, it's not Alan. It's not Alan. Joan. It's Steve. Joan. Steve. 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 <laughs> Steve. So, um, is that why he's Alan? Yeah. Because they named him Aww. at the shelter Prince Napoleon Maurice Gus. Oh. So I thought, well, it's well, going to be Alan. That's, that's a bit long. Is, is, is <laughs> Alan a poodle mix? What do you know? Uh, yeah, I think he's a miniature poodle. Aww. How much does he weigh? 
two ounces. Two. No, come he's on. He's so thin. He's so skinny. Yeah. Oh, two ounces. Really, he's just like a feather. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, how's, uh, how's Alan oh. been getting along? He's, he's, he's perfectly yeah. well behaved here for the two minutes yeah, that you've he been just, here. Yeah, uh, wants, you know, love and attention. That's it. All right. I want to so. give a shout out to Rana, Rana Brown Boone. Um, who I've known for uh, God knows how long, but she said, I'm watching. So she's watching with us and we're together again. So, of course, I have no guest um, besides Joe. And Joe's not a guest, really. She's listener appreciation mode. <laughs> Joe, lo- Joe asks more questions than we do. No, yeah. you know she does. She calls in. She says, I've got a question. I've got two questions. I'm no. like, oh, fuck that. Yeah, Joe, I haven't like, asked Joe one yet. yet. Thanks, Joe. Joe really <laughs> contributes to the show. No, she really does. Yeah. Let's hope I come up with something tonight. Well, you better. I told yeah, you to you're, come up with some <laughs> stuff. You're, you're looking because, glamorous. Because very glamorous. we're sitting here going, I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Um, please call us. 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. Um, all right, I'll tell you. Thank you guys for your well wishes on Facebook. My mother fell, um, mm-hmm. broke her right clavicle, um, mm. and she's got her arm in a sling. So that's been um, pretty interesting. Um, I am back to work. Um, I've got photo shoot upon photo shoot upon photo shoot. Not complaining. Really love it. Yay. Um, and, You're back um, in every day. Um, I do. I have been working. I've been very, very grateful and very fortunate. I've been working every day from like the house and Zooming. Um, and I really hope that, you know, once we're back in the office, possibly in September, um, mm. I never have to use Zoom ever again. Yeah, I know. Mm. Um, yeah. Ever really? again. It's, I mean, because, you know, that's the thing when you work from home and I, I'm not the only person. It, it's, it's, it's burnout. It's fatigue because, you know, no one really communicates. I mean, I have so many different shows with so many different producers and so many different platforms and stuff that, you know, they start scheduling meetings. Nobody talks to each other. And then all of a sudden it's like, sorry, I've got like three meetings at one time. You mm. know, so it's just interesting. It's learning how to manage even Microsoft Outlook. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, Gan's busy, you know, to start putting that in. But um, other than that. Um, I mean, I just can't believe, I can, I'm stunned that we're still sitting here, that we're here for the first time. This mm-hmm. has been the first time mm-hmm. for a year that we've, you know. Yeah. I, we haven't over been here year. for over, a little over a year. Yeah. 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 I mean, little did we know last time we left back in, I think it was February, I think, of last year of 2020, that that was our last time. Or March, it might have been March. No, I think it was March. Yeah. But it is so fun to be back and to be surrounded by these wonderful ladies. Um, And, you know, here we are approaching the June 15th, um, coming up with the no masks and reopening California. But I heard... Joe told me. Did you not tell me that Newsom... Is it Newsom? He's going to extend it. He's going. What? What? Yeah, he's going to change. It. Oh, they're all doing. Oh, what are you he's doing? That he's in going England to push well. out the the the, the, the deadline. Lies. See, I live in Orange County, so mandate. we're in a different land in Orange County. Mm-hmm. We've been yes, open are. for a long time. We don't aren't not wearing masks basically anywhere except for to run inside real fast mm-hmm. and come out. So, well, when, when um, did you hear Gavin Newsom saying that we're going to have to um, extend it to how long? Do you know? I thought the fifteenth. I it, he's giving away one point five million on the 15th in honor uh, to 10 people in honor of the masks not being um, needed anymore or or we don't have to wear them anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but no. they cha- things change every day, right? Yep. Every day. It. He hasn't said the extension deadline yet. yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I expect it. But, you know, once again, I'm in a different land in Orange County. So, yes, you are. Um, you know, it, it, we're, I'm like in a different country and I'm, I'm so. <laughs> Orange County grateful. is the French Riviera. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm in a different California. country. Oh, they don't want you in France. France. You're not allowed in in France. Oh. No? I wouldn't be allowed to go to France right now. If well, I go to England, yeah. I can't, can't go to France. International, right? We, we can't take. No, um, and no one from England can go to France. I haven't oh. been able to go to Canada for there. Really? Months months, because yeah. I actually I want to plan a Spain Italy trip this summer. So yeah, that ain't gonna that happen. Go? No. Good luck. Yep. yep. Um, but the cool part is, you know, the LGBT plus LMNOP community is back in force. Happy Pride, everyone. <laughs> Happy, Happy Pride. Pride, Pride, Pride. Pride. Um, I mean, Mecca. Um, Max Mecca is doing her first party or their first party June twenty sixth um, at the Kimpton. So that should be interesting. Oh, yeah. I mean. You know, everyone's sort of been in hiding or kept to their own little pods in mm-hmm. their groups. Um, so that should be fun. I mean, I, I, look, Max, what you call it? Kelly didn't pay me to say this, but when I saw that invite, I was so beyond excited. That's like, oh my God, a party. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, okay, so this is what I'm the most confused with because this is Pride Month. And, right. but 
there is are no we pride. having pride? Because well, when you go to the website, no. it says Question. we're having. No, LA Pride. Is on Zoom? Is, no, LA Pride is not having pride. They're doing like events, like the baseball a game Zoom thing. and a Zoom thing. Um, but my friend Rachel, um, she and her her friend Julie run Pride Treasures. Mm. Um, they have she like relentlessly calls the prides and finds out what prides are coming, what prides are just virtual. So there are there's like a San Fernando Valley Pride is happening. Mm. Um, in person. Um, I think last weekend, Henderson, Nevada had a pride. Oh, so. and I will let you know, at the end of this month, OC's having a pride. Yeah, are they <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> and OC. So and what about... Y'all just need to come my way. Yes, OC pride. <laughs> OC pride. For sure. I never thought I'd say I'd ex- I'm excited to go to OC pride. <laughs> I ever know. in my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I will tell you something that is happening in West Hollywood is at the W every Saturday night, um, they're, they're having a rooftop uh, party. So, and that is sold out. It's called Night Waves, and that is mm-hmm. sold out like almost every single week. I know people to get in, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. Um, it's, it's, so, yeah. it's so weird because I was had a lot of hesitation. I've been to the Abbey now twice since, oh. since yes. Um, but I haven't been there when it's been super crowded. I've only gone there, you know, like Wednesday night. We were hoping it was girl night uh, just this week, but it wasn't. Um, and it Not was, horrible it, men. I mean, nothing wrong with the men. Nothing wrong with I the men. I love my men, and I love my gay boys. You're always they love the so men. adorable. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, as far as getting out and mingling, um, there's, you know, I don't know. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, like the women, there's the women's, I mean, it's between the sheets as a media sponsor of the Women's Freedom Festival, but that's an online event, um, and that's mm-hmm. on June 19th. Um, oh, but- Nick, Nick Casey has an event. um I will have to come back to you with that because yes, please do because <laughs> uh, Nick tr- uh, sent me uh, this thing and I'll let you guys know. I have it on my phone. I just oh, cool! Have to get it. But I mean, but Joe and I was it last week, two weeks ago? We drove we down did. to Ventura. We drove oh, down yeah. to Ventura. I know Gayan drove down to Ventura. Shocking. No, I, 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 <laughs> but I hadn't been there in a while, you know. Um, but Joe and I drove down, and Lisa and Rachel drove down to Ventura, the Ventura Harbor Harbor Comedy Club. Because Jenny McNulty oh. um, restarted her night, and Lovely. Suzanne Westenhofer was the comedian. For I like that her. Evening. She was she wonderful, was fabulous. She was really good. And um, we trucked down there, and it was, it was interesting. I mean, it was. I mean, first of all, we went somewhere to have dinner, so to have dinner somewhere like mm-hmm. a whole bunch of us was. Just a pleasant event. Oh yes, I was and then late we just for that like, too. I huh? think I was late for that. You too. were always late. You're late for everything. Um, and except your dance, <laughs> except your dance classes. Right. Other than that, you are I'm late like, for wait everything. Wait a minute, are you a Cancer? No. What are you? I'm not sure. Libra. Libra. Okay. Libra. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ellen, that's what, what makes that. sense. So do you mind if I? Sense. Oh, hold on. Who's, is that Cheryl? <laughs> oh, are you a Libra? <laughs> I'm a Taurus. I'm a Taurus. It makes sense. She's a Libra <laughs> because I found the thing. you're late. <laughs> Gay Ann, I just want to mention that I'm also doing a fundraiser for this month too. Uh, it's for the Trevor Project. Have you guys heard yes, of the Trevor? Yes, I used to be a lifesaver for the Trevor Project. I love the Trevor. That's wonderful. So me and two other mediums, we're doing another. It's an online event. I know, but it's an online event. June 22nd online and all the proceeds go to sponsor the trevor project that's wonderful yeah to benefit you know and and it's a lovely organization you know uh so really if anyone's interested please check out my website or learn about it but uh the trevor project is really worthwhile and it's nationwide too they you know that's a suicide prevention Mm -hmm. and crisis hotline Mm -hmm. so if people haven't heard about the trevor project please google them Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, all my years on the LA Pride Board, I mean, Trevor Project, the Matthew Shepard Foundation. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things, a lot of organizations out there. And I just do want to say something. Just because an organization has been around for many, many years, you know, don't think that they don't need your support, they don't need the visibility, and they don't need your cash you know, or your mm-hmm. donations, because, you know, they're all 5013Cs, which are nonprofits. And, you know, no matter, you know, even if someone bequeaths them something, they just don't keep the money, pay the staff and party. They are actually, every money, everything that comes in goes out to be used in certain things. So they constantly need a revolving door of funding coming in. So look up a charity, do something good, you know, considering what the hell we just came out of and how fortunate we are um, to be in gratitude, you know, take a five, $10 if you can, if you can, because I know people are still struggling, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. if you have that, you know, donate it to something 
worthwhile, something that you believe in. Um, any little bit helps. You know, don't be embarrassed if it's only a dollar. It matters. That dollar is money and it matters. Um, I just want to say hi to Firestar who's watching, Ciara. <laughs> Um, hey Firestar, my hey, little Firestar. Aries. She's my baby. Hey, Firestar. Denise, uh, Lynn Is Nickel. she a Disney character? Yeah, right. Firestar? Yeah. <laughs> She's my Disney character. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mario. You found the Nick. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Nick Casey um, let me know he uh, that he's putting, well, I don't know if Nick's doing this, but Equality California is putting together an event called Proud Together. Um, it's June 17th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the chapel. Uh, right next to the Abbey. Uh, we've got live performances uh, by Laganja Estranja, Ooh. who is, uh, Ru was on RuPaul's, is on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, um, and you've got uh, lots of other people there. It's hosted by DJ Asha. Um, you want to go to um, eqca.org slash proud together. Uh, tickets are $50. Oh, hi. Oh, oh, everyone was very fitty, quiet there. For 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Hi, Laura, <laughs> Iris. How are you? Welcome, Laura. Um, thank you guys for all tuning in on our first show. I do appreciate it. You can call us, 323-524-2599. Okay, so I have no topic. Joe? Gender. Oh, <laughs> you know love what? It. Great topic. I, I, I do. I do want to. I do want to speak it. about gender because yes. I'm getting some gender discrimination at work. You oh, are. You are. I, I am. You know, what? what? You happened? know, it, it's 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 uh, you know I'm in sales and it's a good old boys club in sales. Oh, okay. And so, well, especially in Orange County. <laughs> especially in Orange County, you're absolutely right. And it's just amazing how. Um, my at the beginning of the year, my boss went from picking on one female manager to the point where she quit to picking on me, and then I kind of put a stop to it. And then now, what do you mean picking on you? Um, just basically like making little comments, almost as if like, is it and asking like leading questions, like, "Are you sure you still want this job?" Like trying to get you to quit, almost, and micromanaging and controlling, basically like nitpicking, uh -huh. micromanaging, controlling. Mm -hmm. And then, so, um, a couple of weeks ago, he, he robbed one of my reps of his commission and, uh, it, it caused inner turmoil within my team. I asked for a transfer cause I was just done and they, uh, and I knew that they had a job opening, um, for the transfer I was going to. And they said, Oh, sorry, we're not hiring for that position. I'm like, then why do you have an indeed ad? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we just have the indeed, indeed ad, which they spend 500 a month for that ad just to go ahead and test out who's going to be applying i said oh okay so my male counterpart um just got the transfer three weeks ago to that department to get away from the bad manager but now i'm a female and i can't get a transfer to that department so this is allegedly correct yes everything's allegedly <laughs> and no one's gonna know exactly because you may for. come back to not having a job i if everything's <laughs> alleged well, yes. Yes. it felt that way so but but it's like it's unfortunate that this day and age because they don't make equality for women yet in the workforce that mm -hmm. i'm still having to go through this well i wouldn't particularly say i mean look i've been there um not where i am now but um but the thing is you know you can't not every company, you know, you, this is not the first time that you've had issues with the companies that you've worked for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's been gender specific. Gender. Yes. Um, so I, I think, you know, it does happen. Um, I can't, I won't do a blanket statement and say this happens everywhere. Right. But there are certain places that do, do happen. And it's unfortunate because if you're not happy there, you know, it's on you to leave. They're going to keep doing, you know, and how much do people really want to be the fly in the ointment that moves things? And women, you know, as assertive, because I hate the word aggressive. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. they always call or us. Type A. Yes. Aggressive. Mm -hmm. We are type A. I, oh, I speak for myself. I am a type A. I am very assertive. I'm often misunderstood. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, sometimes you just, I mean, do you, do you take it on or do you just mm -hmm. walk away? And I think mm -hmm. even assertive women like ourselves, I don't know if I'd ever want to go into that fight. I am taking it on and I'm walking away. So you're quitting? Yes. So I'm taking it on. So I'm reporting both the managers to the owner and HR. And um, I'm walking away and I'm asking for a severance. Good for you. I'm doing both. Good for you. Because, you know, if 
I can make some change for the next female that's going to be in my shoes, if I can make even this much of an impact, I'm going to do it. But no one thing. Those people, honestly, let's face it, you're going to make that change. And that's great. But they will probably never change. That's true. They won't. And and I'm hoping I'll but make an impact. they will die. They will die eventually. <laughs> and maybe their heirs who inherit oh, it will like, uh, yeah. at some point, you know, um, you know, do it. But, but, you know, when people have a mindset, it just is a mindset. You know, there are people, there are people, I mean, just in general. I mean, look, I know I'm not normal-ish. You know, I'm not saying I'm not normal. I know I'm going to look, I have an opinion. I'm not, like, I don't fit into a box. And I celebrate the fact that I don't fit in a box. I don't want to fit in a box. But so many people have such a problem with me not fitting in their box. Mm -hmm. So I become, you know, I become, you're weird, you're odd, you know, people don't like you. And, and you know, it's sort of like, do I... And this is I speak for anyone. Do you back down just to fit in? No. Or do you sit there and go, you know, whatever. You don't think. This. You work hard and you do a good job. Exactly. That's that's the way you get around it. I'm going to tell you, I met this eclectic little girl. She must have been 12. And she was just the most eclectic little girl I've ever met in my life. And she was so smart. And she told me, oh, my gosh, you know, I don't really have many friends at school. They really don't like me. Mm. And I told her, "That's honey, is because you were born to stand out, not fit in." Good for you, mm -hmm. absolutely. Nice so you know, which which really the topic of gender really brings up a good um, a good topic here, Joe. Thank you, um, because I would like to know your guys' thoughts if yes. gender is something that you can just say you were born this way, therefore I am a woman or a man. Or if it's dictated by um, completely something else, which is what do you feel inside? And, and what are the, what's the argument here? And, and how come this is, it's interesting to me that in the 80s, this wasn't really on the forefront. But right now, it sure is a very important top. It sure is a very important topic right now. It wasn't so much in the 80s, but it sure is just on the forefront like we're even getting to the point where you know on forms you can write rather not say or right but you know or, but in the you know, 80s but in the 80s because that was my generation or my time yeah i was just a kid yeah shut up <laughs> um <laughs> it was more it, like it didn't matter there was so much gender fluidity um especially in the east coast where i was raised going to the clubs i mean they were lgbt elemental p cube clubs I stood far away from them um, because every time I walked past them, it was that gender stereotype. The lesbians were the butch lesbians, mm. and I didn't, I, I didn't identify. I didn't even know if I was gay well, at the time, but I didn't identify with that, and I didn't want to be in there. Well, because you're, but but you're also lapping in with it, which do they do go together? The sexuality identity of what's your sexuality, and then hence what is your gender? They're not, you know, they're not the same Correct. thing. Um, so I mean, you could feel like. I don't need. I don't mean to stand on it like I'm preaching or explaining really? or talking d like. Down <laughs> to you. I think everyone knows. I think everybody seems to know what what the issue is. But I would like to hear thoughts on that. Like, you know, God forbid. Well, I don't know if that's the right thing to say. But what God if forbid. What if I? What if I were born and I really felt like a dude? Well, that's when they, that's when I like, I, and I know what's so interesting is that you can feel that way predominantly, but you can also have a, a very a much feel feminine too. So yes, Joe. So my question would be, what would a dude feel like to you? Yeah, it's really weird. Um, I, I predominantly identify with being a she and feminine, um, all the, you know, total girly girl thing. But the other day, I felt my masculine side come out. No. Yes. No. You don't say. It was interesting. And what did that look like, Mara? <laughs> oh, my God. I was actually saying hello to this girl at the Abbey. And uh, 
I can't explain it, but she felt I felt more like the guy, and she was more the girl in my mind. I, I've never had but was that experience. But she feminine too? Not mm, she's yeah, she's gorgeous and and has long hair, but she also and that sportiness to her. Yeah, yeah, but I. Uh, I really rarely have the masculine thing come out in me, and I, I embrace it. I think that's great. I felt more like a guy okay. talking to her. They must have felt how? fun. Tell me how? how? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm, like, shaking. I'm trying to. Was it, was it physical? Like, was it a, a It was an energy. It's an energy. It's an energy. Yeah. an energy. I felt maybe because I approached her, so I felt like. Control. confident i felt like i was assertive and i felt like i don't know it was more of a masculine feeling i get it because i'm feminine and i you know i i never like everyone knows and not that i you know i've never really been drawn to butch women mm -hmm. ever and i have i know trust me yes yeah <laughs> and um i've always been like the ones on the fence the pretty women that are maybe I felt energetically, not physically, more masculine than me, energetically. And, um, you know, and it was like, you know, you're, you know, you're two femmes. I'm like, well, yeah, but it's a totally different thing. It's energetically, mm. it's masculine. I mean, at work, because of the business, and mm -hmm. it is a very male dominated field, even though it's getting better in the entertainment business. I mean, I do feel more masculine of confidence control mm -hmm. um i you know i'm great in work isn't yeah. it funny how confidence is is you and i both attributed it to the more masculine yeah. side yeah, that's what it's not weird gonna, right? what yeah. were you gonna say yeah that's what i was gonna comment mm -hmm. on yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, i told you we were related i know okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> but joe you brought it up so you must yeah, have something you, to say what are your thoughts um i don't well now i'm thinking really i mean gender is a human made thing right yeah you mean like societal? Yes. Societal, for sure, determines mm -hmm. someone's gender. Because now that I'm applying for job ads, I am. you, you have to fill that section out. And it's male, female. Um, some have non-binary. Right. Some mm -hmm. say I decline or I prefer not to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking... Do I Maybe get in you should trouble? Do what I what I choose? I I mean, you know, I mean, you, know what, you know what I would to do. Have to identify. But you know what I would do if I, I mean, not that I'm applying for a job, but just to fuck with them, I'd write another little box and go all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Love it. <laughs> all of the above. You didn't have that one. All of the above. Some days I'm masculine. Some days I'm in I my feminine. I think that's non-binary. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely, uh, that's a great idea. Maybe, I mean, wouldn't it be an interesting experience to, or experiment to see if you were just to put, you know, all of the above or or, or just the non-binary one, how you would be treated. Exactly. You when, but then what you I show up. Called. When you know. You, well, yeah. I mean, like if you get a call, you. But most people don't even know what non-binary. Area yeah, is. let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about non-binary. What does it mean? Well, I let me look it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to say the you wrong thing. You know what? Thing. You look it up because I'm trying to read people. You are a useless stuff. bunch of lesbians. I believe. From, oh, no, 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 oh my! No. I don't want to oh, say the wrong. Yeah, thing. no, I want to hear from Cara. Well, <laughs> yeah, I believe. Well, well, go ahead, Cara. I mean, I'm a girl. I'm always. I'm, we are girls. I'm girly all the way, but I did once fall for a girl. And that oh, feeling really? that you just talked about, yeah. that sudden, like, a real different energy. Yes. And it's because huh. um, she was very beautiful, but a masculinity came out of her. And that's, uh, it hit me somewhere. Out and I'm like, her. whoa, this is, yeah. And I and it was a fascinating few months of my life. Really? Yeah, fascinating. I mean, it is weird because we all encompass, uh, most people, if they want to embrace that about themselves, we all encompass both sides both energies are within us so i just feel that it's definitely a societal conditioning um when we have to choose one you know but then For it's sure. part of language as well and I'm, I'm i have to say i'm thoroughly confused by the whole fucking lot of it well mm. i try yeah. to use language they them um when i talk about an ex i say my ex i try not to use gender language it's hard and, and it's when hard. i'm referring to a room full of people i i'm trying to stop saying hey guys how's it going right you know? guys yeah yeah but you, it, you do it all the time because because but, that's how it is in language it's male dominated right. first so i'm trying to say hi how y'all doing today oh. how y'all doing how y'all doing today so i'm <laughs> I, trying I mean, to rephrase really everything because unfortunately our generations 
we were engraved and this is how you speak. And so I'm just trying to get all of that out to be politically correct because I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah, but you can't live like that. I mean, I understand. I applaud your um, trying to be really conscious of it. But if I were if I were doing that, I would be going around like, hey, guys, uh, you know, and I would just constantly be tripping over myself. I do make the uh, definite um you know, change when it is somebody that goes by they or, them. you know, or them. I, I for sure want to make sure that I'm constantly abiding by how somebody prefers to be, um, whatever, what's the word? Addressed. Uh, addressed. But, like, things like, hey, guys, I, I don't know. Maybe that is. Well, I heard recently of someone who was quite a of someone who got like, in trouble for saying "Hey, guys!" Really? Because the, oh, the, really? the the people yes. there were offended. Exactly. So th that's why I don't want to do it. So I, I, I have a team. It shuts things down in some ways. It, it does because it makes people feel like just unheard or or not recognized, and I don't know who it's ever mm. going to be. Uh, I have a great team. I love my team. I'm going to be devastated when I leave them. Half of, half of them are empaths, and the other half are sensitive, but they carry a tough exterior. So non-binary says not relating to, composed of, or involving just two things. So in so essence, not male we're or female. all non-binary mm -hmm. because it's like what you said. So I'm, I, I label my, myself as a sporty femme, total sporty. Femme. Uh, you will always find me in soccer shorts, my hokas. And but do you go top. by she? Definitely she, mm -hmm. because I'm I femme, so lipstick, mm -hmm. getting dressed up, makeup, hair done, everything else, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely identify as she. Um, however, you know, during the day, it's you know, people will call me aggressive. I'm like, I'm assertive. Like, I know what I want, and I'm going to go out and get it. You don't have to go ahead and try to bash me by saying I'm aggressive, because a man wouldn't be bashed that way. I'm going to put Joe mm, on the spot, point. because obviously, you know, Cara, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. all, you know, we're all gay here. Mine's Cara. Um, sorry, everybody. I know. I tried. <laughs> and I Cheryl. I'm sorry. And Cheryl. I, I keep forgetting go. Cheryl. Cheryl. Um, but <laughs> Cheryl. But Joe. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Cheryl. But obviously, Joe, you identify yourself as what? I'm on the more the butch side of the spectrum of the lesbian continuum there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so Joe and I were having a conversation about femme, like femme. And, you know, because you've got these sporty femme. And then you came mm -hmm. up with some other terms. So can you, so oh, please, can you tell. please tell sure us what the, what the, how many femmes from a butch's point of view, <laughs> what the femme scale is in butch? I don't, well, I can't speak. For no, everybody. for you, for Joe's butch. <laughs> what is the femme scale that you got? Well, there's you got, <laughs> names. You got your high femmes. Explain right? what can they are. Can you get a little closer that's, to the mic? That's not me. Because I'm older and I need your, to your speak high up. femmes. And what are they? Let's see. I'm that's high heels. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It is a spot to be put on here. Um, <laughs> you don't want to say that. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Well, there's there's high femmes. Uh, well, we had a conversation about this because there's the high femmes that are, you know, kind of uh, Do they smoke high a lot of pot? High, man, high, high maintenance. High maintenance. Like high they take maintenance. hours right. to get ready. Are those the pillow yeah. queens? It could Not be. always. Okay. Could be. No, she, this is Joe. Oh, sorry. 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 Come on. No, but I'm high maintenance, but I don't think I'm a high fan. Well, well, this is Joe's high stuff. This is Joe's stuff. Look, okay, got it. Okay. Stop. This is not uh, an attacking yeah. anyone. Or, yeah. or, I'm like, I'm so she's high. She's not going around the room. Yes, we all know that. Um, but <laughs> I missed it. What did she say? She said she's high maintenance. Oh, oh, oh yes. So, so you've oh, got. Yeah. So you've got. Then you've got, 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 then you got the high femmes. Yeah, the total presenting. Feminine. It's Joe's story. I yeah. said presenting yeah. high femmes. Yes. Yeah. That are um, not high maintenance. Mm. Right. Okay. Am I high maintenance? I don't know. Am I one of those? Oh my gosh, Katie! Am I in that crowd? You're sporty. You're sporty, fam. No. I guess yeah. There could be sporty fams, and then I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. You can you know go then down to somebody thought I because I identified more butch that I bound my breastuses. Oh, interesting. And do is that is that possible? Do you do such a thing? That's a no. I said no. Okay. Um, and nor do I nor do I try to present myself like a man. Mm -hmm. I do not try to do that. I'm just who I am. What's that movie with the hmm. Oh God help me. Um, hmm. with what's her name? 
Where's Hillary she? Swank? Thank you. And Boys the don't mo- cry. Thank you very much. What? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mara. I thought that's what she was thinking. <laughs> that's a complete charade. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, but, that, <laughs> but that one, I mean, what that, like, that one was, I mean, like, that one, she was butch. I mean, she bound her breasts. I mean, and, and she bound her breasts mm-hmm. and she packed. Yeah, she, she, sometimes people, people want to do that. Do you mm-hmm. know what packing is? I'm going to guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it... <laughs> Is it something about a fake penis? Yeah, um, yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay. One of my girlfriends did that to me a little over a year ago. She got in my car and she's like, watch this. She grabs my hand and puts it on her crotch. I'm like, what am I doing wow. right now? Wow. She's like, I'm packing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you are. That, that I think <laughs> everyone should try that. And I've never tried it, but I think every woman should try that. Should try a pack? Well, I'm packing, yeah, but it's to go to I London. I think it would be... I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it I would don't be. Think I would want to. Come on, we should go out one night and we should and do that. I would. Be, I would walk. I'm gonna tell you something. Something. I'm gonna wear heels Hold and like, a dress. Kristen can carry it, tar- carry it off. This one can carry it off. I can't carry off a you big crotch. You and I crotch. would be laughing stock of the Abbey. Okay. We they would go. What the fuck? Well, that's not very. Yeah, let's bind it. I'd like to see us bind our breasts too, because yeah. it's not like we're flat chested. Oh, look, my boobies I'm like coming saying, out. Yes, I'm saying. I, you know, and Sean, I don't know what he's thinking here as we talk about this stuff. Like, I do know about God, this I love that I'm in here. But <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking just for the feeling of it. Like, look, I will never have a penis. No. So I would like to kind of know. Do what you want to know well, you how I really know, know how it how feels? How do you know it's a thing that just goes it in your? It feels it's, like it's not like it's workable. It's not like it's automatic. Though. You're with someone. Okay. You flip the switch. Look, when I'm done with my dildo, it lays on my pelvis, and I know how it feels like to have <laughs> a dick at that moment. <laughs> Sean, I'm like, is this what right, it feels right, like? Sean, right, right, right. Sean and Cheryl have now <laughs> left, left the building. The building. <laughs> Completely red. Cheryl. <laughs> Red from here. From here, she has been <laughs> initiated or something. <laughs> You're initiated. I'm just saying, like, if you have an imagination, let it go. Okay, oh, let's, oh, let's no. all wait, pack. Wait, 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 wait. Let's do it. I'm down. But the thing is, imagination <laughs> in we been life. Drinking? No, me. No, have we been drinking? No, no yes. I'm, not no. I'm stone cold. But sober. how am I gonna pack? I wear tight pants. Wait, 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 wait. Imag- <laughs> forget. I'm moving on. This is stupid. Um, imagination. Oh my god, that was like Mara going. I'm bored. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what's going on? Oh I'm still trying to figure out how to pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying it could be empowering. But imagine, it, but see, but see, why? No, hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stop, stop, stop. That's wrong. Okay, listen to this. Tris, I mean, Tris, um, Mara just said <laughs> packing is empowering. I mean, I said it could be. I don't know. It could. Well, of course not. So here we are again thinking. <gasps> Right. Yeah. But, it's the man, oh but it's the male unit that makes us powerful. Or, or what man do you know says, oh my God, I wish I didn't have my penis. I'd like to peck a vagina and see what that feels like. Well, there's oh. probably many men yeah. that would I have. That's why they wear, a lot of them wear women's lacy and it's, lingerie. It's true. I have had a man tell me, I wished I knew what it felt like um, having an orgasm as a woman. Like well, he really wanted to experience that. And I'm going to say, I think it's way better as a woman having an orgasm than a man because we're more sensitive. You don't it's, know. it's hidden. It's hidden and it's more sensitive versus well, something we don't that's know. out. You don't right? We, we don't can know. have a gazillion. We orgasms. have more. But how many women don't have orgasms besides the fact that they're, you know, not maybe in the right partnership? Yeah, they're not in the right partner. They no, 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 they no, 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 no. But there are health issues that women can't. I mean, you know, the True. older women are. I just you like. Know, sometimes uh, they don't have orgasms. Well, sometimes they, they have more. They need a vibrator. But Look, they have. Older you women. know what? Look, I can't. Let's get away from the sex and talk <laughs> more about the gender. Right, but what I'm oh, saying is, okay. ima- going back How about to vibrators? imagination. <laughs> oh, imagination. Old, old news. Imagination. Vibrators. Imagination. Yes. But imagination is so just important in life. It doesn't matter whether you're male, female, no matter what topic is to be exploratory, to have that imagination. I mean, I don't sit here and I don't, I don't care what it feels like 
for a man to have an orgasm. I think if I was a straight woman, I still wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> no, but I, I often kind of oh wonder because like when men have an orgasm, sometimes like their cum just squirts uh, right here and sometimes it squirts like six feet away. And I'm is, wondering like, but my point is, is, is so gross. Hold on, this is disgusting because I can't even think. I mean, giving head makes me nauseous. I know. But so, the, so the after effect and the triumph after giving head is that, that makes me run to run the other way. But- I think, obviously, and I've, I mean, you know, I imagine well, women if, can squirt too. I know. Oh I had God, a girl. Look, can look, we look, get look. off this? I'm, I had a girlfriend oh, that squirted, yeah, and it was just oh, sorry, the oddest sorry, shit yeah. ever. Okay. I mean, it was kind of oh interesting God. and then scary all at the same time, but very messy. Yeah, and but I didn't I, like it. I'm <laughs> wondering if yeah. men have a stronger orgasm if they shoot further. Who cares? Who cares? Let's go into some bad thing. We have better. Oh, hold on. Sean is shooting on. Men are on the Hold on one second. Sean. Our gentleman at the board. Can you Hello. go on? Can you go on camera? Do you have a camera? On? I don't have a camera, right. unfortunately. Sean is very as, cute. As don't put Sean on the spot. I'm, I'm, no, okay. no, I'm not. Hold on one second. Stop. Stop. I'm ready. She was saying that. I did not call Sean out. Sean <laughs> was sitting here going like this the whole time. You could have a strong orgasm and not come that much, and you could have a weak orgasm and come a lot. It doesn't really matter at all. Okay, so really? that's solved. Let's go on Let's to the next thing. That Imagination. <laughs> I, I will oh, just throw something strange. in. I, I've had more, obviously, I've, I've seen a lot more penises than you girls. Well, obviously. And I've dealt with them, obviously. Obviously. But I find that I'm an imagining, and I'm not, again, we may have to come to you, Sean. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it seems that after orgasm, women can go into the afterglow, but men are like, they kind of like want to turn on the golf. So I think women, I mean, I lie there in cock shock, for quite some time, oh, enjoying the I moment. Heard that word. Cock shock. Yeah, well, you won't. Cock shock? Yeah, no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Women really go in cock shock. Well, I oh, do. God. Okay. Like <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but once it's over, Sean, is it is it kind of over? Are you back to the golf? I go night night. Oh, I, go, I get really tired, yeah. All right, someone please call in. 323-524-2599. But the thing is, I mean, you know, look, women as beings, just in general, um, you know, some are not, but the majority of women I know, you know, we do have that afterglow. And and, so, and my straight friends have it with their when they have. What do you have mean sex. afterglow? They're afterglow. smiling. It's they, a they smi like no, you need a, no, you need like a cool down. Oh, and your whole it's body like, is just like, tingly and it's tingly delicious. And you're just going, and you want to just bask in that feeling yes. of wholeness. You see, and I don't energy. know. I'm a, I, I need it multiple times over the course of at least four to six hours. So my after glow doesn't happen until the next day. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. Look, I'm multiple. I'm insatiable. Look, no, no. I mean, I, I do multiple <laughs> orgasms. I enjoy it. I think like doing it one and leaving is boring as fuck. That's a one night stand. Um, and no, I, in a one night stand, you could have. 20. Yeah, you. Go yeah, that's it. true. Uh, okay, obviously. Sorry. Never, no, it's okay. I've never done. one. You just remember? need to have more. Don't worry. We'll get you late. Mm -hmm. I don't need to get late. I'm just saying I've never done a one night stand, and <laughs> oh, I've never done pull, fun pull, with pull, benefit. Pull, 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 Between the sheets, we're as if I'm like acting like I am so distraught that I haven't got laid. We'll get you some shots later. Uh, Let's go to the fuck? strip club. You know, here's Orange the topic. County, they're open. Here's the topic. Why is everybody <laughs> so sex obsessed? Like, why? No, because it's great. Not, not saying everyone in this room, it's, but uh, why no, is Adam, culture? It's okay. Well, well, we ended just... up here, didn't we? Well, I just yeah. don't know why culture is so freaking because preoccupied sex, with it. Okay, it's the media. It's the media, 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 media. We're media. here on Earth to have a physical experience. And so what does that mean? Eating great food and having a lot of orgasms. Mm, that's hedonism. Yes, one of, too. One of, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the seven yeah. pleasures. Huh? All like right. So here's a good, pleasures. here's a good, here, <laughs> yes. Here's a good question. What? Nora? The whole, like, I can't, I can't do it with someone. I can't make love. I can't do the F word with someone unless I am emotionally invested. There's those type of people. What is that? Pan? No. Pan. That's pan um, sexual no, no um you can't you can do it if there's no feelings there that's how you prefer it then there's you know but i like the ones that need a connection sapiosexual Sapio? is the mental one? Yeah. one so yeah. then so a lot of women are i need to feel an emotional connection in my experience what i whom i've met some men have told me that as well 
Um, or else, like, I could flip back and forth. I don't need an emotional connection. It can be purely sex. Uh, STD free, one night stand, of course. They have to show <laughs> me their STD the card yeah. and, and the papers. <laughs> um, so it can't be. So I could go either or. So What about but, the rest of you guys? I cannot. You cannot what? I can't have sex. I, I can't just do a one night stand with oh, no feelings. Feelings must be involved. Absolutely. Yes. I, mm-hmm. For me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't think, like I said, I'm not going to judge. I, I'm friends with Tristan. Um, but, <laughs> um, I'm not going to judge. I like um, both. I do both. I can't. I, yeah, I, I like mean, both. I can't. I mean, I'm, a lot but of I, people can do both. I but what if you, someone's can really you? hot? Yeah. 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 You can do both. I cannot. Yeah, if someone's yeah. really hot, why not? I mean, it, I used to be able to do both, but now that I'm older, I, I respect my body too. Like, I'm too much in my body to, if somebody gets that, if someone gets to experience my body with me, then I better have some feelings for them, and they better have feelings for me. Exactly, that's how I feel. And I'm not saying, I, look, I, I look, I am the proponent of never say never because shit happens. I don't want to pigeon myself because it's being taped in eternity. I'll get you drunk. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I'm not going to say I'll never do it. It just hasn't come up, and there hasn't been someone or or a situation. Come with me to my parties. <laughs> yeah. Th- they could be my children. If I wanted to sleep with kids, I'd be They're a pedophile. They're all ages. Okay? All ages. I think it really depends <laughs> on how we're raised or or how uh, the significance that you put on sex. Because, I don't know. I just think, like, if some people are more free with it. And, it, it like, 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 Roxanne is okay, you know, a lot of the time. with You don't need – you're free with sharing your body when you want to and when it's safe, right? Yes. But then people like me, I have a whole shame thing tied up in that. Like, uh, like sex shouldn't really be enjoyable. It's it, – it's, I don't know. I just have so many oh. – Well, Dorothy. why don't I just tell oh. the world I have so many sex issues <laughs> yeah. in the world? So, so there you go. So over here on <laughs> my sex side – I no issues <laughs> at all. So on my side of the spectrum, no, 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 no. this whole side because this one, <laughs> Joe she's says something that she'll help like, me with them. This, like, I am the dividing line. Okay. <laughs> yes, you are. It's you know, it's called the lifestyle, and the lifestyle is is you know mul- multiple partners, and then there's also BDSM. I oh. I don't care, like who or where the person is you know what i find in those communities they're loving they're accepting they're supportive they're just we nice have friends that are we, we, oh, the and I have people. friends no yeah, but yeah we, we have friends that are polyamorous and and you know that's hey look different strokes for different i don't judge yeah i just have always and it's because i am believe it or not i am a romantic Deep down inside. So am I if I like somebody. So mm-hmm. I sit there and I just want, you know, to be swept off my feet. And I, I just want it to yeah, be Yeah, but perfect. see, I'm I, the same way. And I totally relate to you. But until that happens, I want to play. Okay, so I can play with myself and have a great time. Yeah, but I do that true. too, very though. True. Now, here's the other thing I'm wondering about is the Why poly. Why is this first show all about sex? Moving on. Because well, it's wonderful. I, Between the Sheets is the name. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. So I want to ask you guys about <laughs> the polyamorous lifestyle because... Are, am I was do I feel like you have to be first of all I don't believe in marriage for me but I'm just saying like when you're mono, monogamous with someone like when I date someone I only want to be dating that one person I can't I can't do that polyamorous stuff me neither. and I don't me but neither. I don't know if that's because society raised me that way or if that's uh, my you know what I was born thinking because it seems to me like humans are not supposed to be forever with one yep. person so mm-hmm. i just don't know how much of that has been um what i've just been culturally raised to believe i think so or i mean how much you, it how it really makes how, you feel well i, I, I don't know like i mean I, I how would you okay so you said okay. you don't wouldn't polyamorous want that. yeah and you said no. no well i mean like polyamorous meaning like like Men and women, and going from one to the other. Or just girl, no, different girls. I just girls. mean having an emotional relationship with more than one person, where you're physical, and emotionally I can't, with more than one. Because I focus on one person. Yeah, uh, is it because we get overwhelmed, or like, <sighs> you know what? I, I'm a multitasker in in my in like my business role. I don't want to start fucking multitasking my like 
I think that'd be a like lot personal. of work. It would be a lot and of work. And then how come some in the polyamorous world, I heard like you have your main but one. Nobody your likes main... polyamory yeah. here. So... Yeah, so here's the th- yeah. None of us your main one and care. then your secondary. We don't, we don't like right. it. So we don't like it. So for example, with me, I have no problem dating multiple at the same time. Not together, just at the same time. Not in one bed. But do, hold on. But Well, do I you, don't mind that. <laughs> but, do you, but do you tell when you start doing, like starting collecting your harem, do you tell them? <laughs> yes. That you, 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 you're you open with them and you, you say, I'm dating others and you find other people that are okay with that. However, I'm not polyamorous. So polyamorous means I'm in a relationship with you. And with you, and with you, and you're my main. It's like so big love. Now, when Mormons. I never watched it, Mormons. when I'm flirting with Gayanne, and I want to be with Gayanne, I'll talk to you about it, and then you're going to know that I'm going to be with Gayanne, and then I'll have a relationship with you. I'll let you know that she's my main, and then I, when I meet Mara. So, so then is it only physical then with yeah. Gayan? It would only be physical. Well, no, your main is emotional. No, it's yeah. actual relationships with each one. So it's emotional with each one. It's, so they need they need help. So um, so <laughs> that's so that's greedy, why greedy that's why I opinion. don't I don't do like I guess they go, who's your who's your daddy? Who's your daddy <laughs> no, today? Who's I your know. daddy tomorrow? <laughs> who's your daddy next week? What the fuck, man? So for me, I'll never answer to anybody. Therefore, polyamory isn't for me. So I just, I like dating. Look, anybody out there, are you polyamorous? I mean, Cheryl, of course, we know Cheryl Cheryl is, is, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Cheryl's everything now tonight. Let me just say something. I I know Cheryl's polyamorous. Just look at her. Let me just say something. I am so out of my comfort zone. (laughs) Yay! But also, let me just say that I did talk to an anthropologist, a very well-studied science person many years ago who explained to me that everything in nature is perfect and so when we have these questions uh we kind of look to nature you know there are some animals that mate for life right there are some animal group families that you know uh live in tribes or you know uh it's very interesting this conversation because that's where my mind goes is really what is happening with the um, animal kingdom with mother nature uh you know i think anything i think anything is possible really you know i think if you do it from a place of love then you know yes uh, yes very true good because everything should be able see that's the thing in a society you have judgment you have labels (sighs) if we didn't like live in this type of society and really if you view nature you're absolutely right nature versus nurture but not even no 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 but if we could just take just some hints from how nature is okay well well, nature is everything right so why so if she's comfortable with this and that's her lifestyle it should be okay with us it doesn't mean no it is that i'm saying but it doesn't mean that we should even be having a topic about it because it's just interesting. It's, it's, inter- I it. I it's understand, interesting. I understand you, and I'm not trying to pivot you. I'm just saying, you know, if we could just really, as a society and a culture, and 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 as you know, because we're animals too. I mean, just, we're we're all Hell yeah. animals. You know, if we, but we are so because we maybe have the cognitive, we have the speech, we have things that the whole animal kingdom doesn't have. Although they probably do in their own way, but we mm-hmm. don't understand them, and they don't mm-hmm. understand us. But if we could just be mm-hmm. sort of more as a culture, open-minded, and really take a lot of, you know, cues from the animal kingdom, quite frankly. You know, right? Look, yeah. I would like to be Alan and sit in somebody's lap all day <laughs> and be a pet. You know, that'd be nice. And and it would be, I, I it would be this, nice. There's one yeah. distinction I, I would say about one night stands. What? Um, and I've had some <clears throat> one night stands, but not for many many years have I gone in the predatory role of searching it out. Okay. If if in the, in the later years it's like oh oh I see you want a bit of that oh I once wasn't expecting it okay. It's been more like that, but not searching it out. I don't go out looking for su- uh, a, a penis to sit on. <laughs> All you have to do is well, go on Tinder and Bumble. Now we know that Kara is a top. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go on Tinder and Bumble. My You'll eyes. have 5,000 matches within 24 hours. Oh, no. I had so, a terrible year of dating on online dating. 
Really, oh, I've heard good. some of the stories. You don't have to share, but they're mm -hmm. they're pretty. Men are men are. I mean, women are assholes, but men are even worse. Oh, they're all, no, they're all as bad. I as don't each know. Other. Women are pretty bad. Women can be pretty bad. I don't know who's worse. Well, well men. Ask, ask a man, he'll say a woman. Ask a woman, he'll say a man. Yeah, and then ask lesbians, and you know, you know, say women. all be assholes. And then the other half of the lesbians will go women. The other one goes, oh god. I'm going to turn to, I'm going to be, I'm just going to go to men right now. Yeah, I'm going to be right, bisexual. Right, so, right. you know, I mean, it's all, it's all, it really is, again, <laughs> going back to labels. It's, you know, if you feel like, look, I have, I have no, as of right now, no cognitive desire or predatory to go and search out a guy. I mean, I, who was I talking to? I can't remember. I talked to so many people. And someone was like, you know, being with a guy, you know, how can you say you don't like it if you've never been with one? I can say that. One? Well, I mean, I know you can. I guess I could too. I, mean, I, I she how, how, because when we talked about penises, she literally goes. <laughs> I this did. One? So I wait, like, you're a gold star? Me? Yeah. Uh huh. What oh. is that? A gold, so star, a gold star means star. that you haven't done it with a guy by choice. You don't want to. Correct. Wow. Mm, wow. But it's not to say, as I get so funny, uh, I either I get older and maybe I'm just getting desperate. But now <laughs> I'm changing my thing. Going, well, you know, if a, if a guy came along. Well, and I actually found that energy, because for me, as I get older, it's about the energy. Would I, would I, would I try it? And, you know, before in the past, I go, oh, fuck no. But now maybe, I'm like, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe, but I'm still not, but there's, but I'd have like a rule book, like, you know, I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, you don't have no. to slide it in slowly. You know? I do love <laughs> men with feminine energy. Oh, I just love it. It just. And I used I, to have gr crushes on some of my guy, um, gay guy friends. Oh my god! Like if I could marry gay. some of them, yeah. I would totally. What I'm like, that's why. Like, oh, sorry. Yeah, no. It's like if I fall for every single gay boy, and I'm like, oh, okay. Like so. Daniel Levy <laughs> on Schitt's Creek. Has anyone seen Schitt's Creek? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Love when that, he, that character David, I, yeah. he's so femme, but he's so sexy. I, he's he's totally <laughs> so cute. You have to send me a picture. Look, I, yeah, there was He's a girl so not that, sexy there to was me. A woman, yeah, right, me either. There was a woman that used to be on the panel, and um, she was the young one of the bunch. I don't want to call her out. But she used to fall oh, head. Yes, you. She used to fall head over mm. heels. Like, for gay guys. She was straight. I always she was did. I did, too, when Same I was here. straight. Same for here. For gay guys. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my God. And All then the time. when she didn't pick them, mm -hmm. she picked men that were the biggest assholes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, man, like just a male chauvinist. Like, And it's like. Wow. Do we have a call? No, huh? Uh, no. People, that, that call kind of, That brings up another yeah, right. topic. Yes. Actually. Yes, well, the topic of why do nice guys or gals finish last, or do they? Would one prefer... What is it about that? Personally, I've I've always been attracted to jerks, and I, um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm over that now, I think. Um, but I think for me, it's because I usually want, I'm scared to be too intimately t tangled in, with someone. Um, so I tend to go after the unavailable on some level. I know that they're not going to be reciprocating and I can't live that way forever, but that's just the way I've, I've always gone after the unrequited thing because I'm not ready or I'm not. It's mm. called emotionally unavailable. Yeah. yeah. And some um, women go for that. They it's love a, it, that. Get back in the mic. They love that. No. Lots of women go for the unavailable. Oh my God. That's, I'm the look, sucker for going for the emotionally unavailable. I get the emotionally I'm unavailable. Done. Then I get emotionally attached. And yes, then, that's me. And then I'm then the, it's it's overwhelming for mm -hmm. them. The only ones I fall for are the unavailables. Mm -hmm. And then I get hurt. And I'm like, what an idiot. I knew what I was walking into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, guess what? I finally learned at my age not to walk into that. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, Joe keeps telling me that. Um, <laughs> if you, but if when you I know. get in these situations, she's like, uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Cheryl, what do you think about um, why women go or why? What is the allure for some people that find the emotionally unavailable attractive? Because, uh, and this is just one of many, many ways. But uh, well, because they can help them. You know, Very I true. think a lot of women want to help save, mm -hmm. change somebody. Fixer. You know? mm -hmm. so, like Gwen Stefani has a line mm -hmm. like, mommy, can I, or she's like talking about a guy and when we're song, she's like, can I keep him? You know, kind of <laughs> like, like a stray dog, you know, that you want to nurture and like, and shape. And then every, lots of women think I want to be the one that, that, that one jerk just, 
right. thought through to. But do and, you realize you that know, you're being played? Uh, because yeah. they, well, my opinion, that you're kind of being played because this person is who they are and they perpetually go from the same to the same to the same. They get the benefit and you lose out. And well, I will give you. a challenge thing. Yeah, I'll give you a different perspective. Yes. It's the conquer. The conquer and the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes, both. Because I love the conquer. I, I say I love going after my prey. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, she's going to get married soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Not even dating. Don't want to. I think it's good if you have some insight, though. Like, by my, by the time you're in your 40s, like we are, like, I think it's good. We get some insight that, hey, we're purposely doing this because we are afraid to be in the real in the real but that's thing. the thing when you hit i keep touching you oh, no, I, just I, just I just said i was 40 so i love I me too i was, I was that's yes. what i'm hugging, hugging yeah, 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 no, totally. um but i mean i think like with age because you know i'm not 40 i'm not much farther past 40 we're all in our 40s in here. my head um but i think as you get older and you go through life you know i think we all go through the same pattern you know and at the 20s this is this is how we are in our 20s 30s we do this 40s we start to see by our 40s what things in our life if we're aware okay if we open ourselves yeah. up to being aware self-aware self-awareness mm -hmm. what is happening like why aren't i this why does this pattern keep repeating in my life why and i think at, at that point you become self-aware and i guess you go through some sort of ex well one would hope um <laughs> some sort of exploration growth. and growth yeah yes you know and then when you hit your 50 ish you know, you're still making mistakes, you know, because it's really hard to break those patterns. It, it really is hard. And even though you are at this point in your 50s, at least for me, fully aware, see the red flags, you know it. But there's this thing in you that you just haven't really quite worked through it mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in by 60s I, again i don't know i'm not there yet i'm only two years away from that or maybe never <gasps> breathe okay um <clears throat> i'm in my 60s and i no. did not discover it in my 40s that's for fucking sure i, I did two terrible husbands mm. since my 40s oh i'm sorry i'm barely discovering it now like i i literally haven't dated all year and i've just been working on and working and working on my things with my therapist and that's um, that's great today what we talked about um, what you mentioned and is just um, why are we doing the patterns like Mara mentioned she said okay was is this something like a societal norm it was taught to me when I was young therefore this is why I'm doing it mm -hmm. and then at what age do we actually realize the patterns that we're doing and that's what I'm working on right now hence why I, I uh, have not dated anyone deliberately and I am talking to a few that I might meet casually as a friend out for a lunch thing, but I don't know if I'm going to actually like pursue it further than that because it's, it's like you get to the point where you don't trust yourself to pick uh, one that's healthy and that's not emotionally unavailable. So now I, I need to test oh, myself. Nice realization. The but, off picker. But yeah. you know what? I yeah. also do believe that we put a lot of importance on being whole, whole, with finding a partner. Why is it not okay just to be okay? Alone. Uh, fine with me. No, I know. It's, yeah. Oh, but you're but, saying but, society like makes such an importance that you have to be with a part of your other half. You have to find your soulmate. You have to, you have to be. Your twin you know flame, why? Because whatever. that's how someone feels loved instead of just turning into their spirituality. Right, because you have to love. No, it's not about, it's partially about spirituality, but it's, it, you hit the nail on the head. It's about why do we need someone outside to give to, us validation to give us validation mm -hmm. and to give us love well like tr like Roxanne just said it's because uh, if we're if we looked more internal and more spiritually our source our higher being would fulfill us and take us it should be enough i mean i know cheryl has done a lot of work i don't know on yourself you know cuz you're very private about this but i know that <laughs> yeah. you do work with people <clears throat> you mm -hmm. know sort of guiding them and sort of finding sort of how to, how to help them on their journey you know i mean it's like you know have a psychic and have a therapist and that's the best way to go to be honest um and but, a masseur, of course yeah and a masseur, yeah exactly <laughs> but i mean joe joe also does a lot of work I, you don't have to talk about the work joe but i mean but joe actually seriously has been doing a lot of work on herself and and she's great because like for me i'm not saying you're great you're like 
your no i like that okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> but i mean i'll take that but i mean she has for me she's such a good sounding board you know and, and gives me such insight you know and, and not like oh never like i told you so never 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 but you know she'll send me you know meditations and she'll send me this and she'll go i know you won't listen to it but um you know it's yeah. you're welcome but it's there for you and you know and i figure i say to myself and i do i say okay Anne. and it and the other side goes yeah <laughs> um why don't i listen to these things you know why 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 i mean i i, I believe i'm aware i know i'm aware of certain things um I say I'm working on it, but why is there a hesitancy for me to throw and go head in? It's all from past, what you've experienced in your past. But why fear that? Because you do that. It's going to make you better. It's going to be, make you a better person. You're going to have more self-love. It's going Subconsciously, to... Subconsciously, you don't think you deserve it. Because it, you, And I think that's what you're working. When we work on ourselves, that's what we're working on. We're working on realizing right. who we are. You're right, because that's one thing that I really realize is I don't love myself enough. Because if I loved myself enough, I would never date someone emotionally unavailable to get hurt. I would never put myself in these situations. But all, so, everyone at this table has done that. Right. But, so so it's, that's it's, why I needed to love myself. That's why I haven't dated, because I had to learn how to love myself but enough. But I'm going to tell you. It still happens? You're going to love yourself and then it'll still happen. And then you'll go back and learn how to relearn because that is everyone's journey. I mean, we are human. You know, we find someone that looks perfect on purpose. That's telling us that's not feeding us. That's not the narcissist. That's not, you know, the player. That's not the emotionally unavailable. And we're going to, and we buy into it. And then the rug gets pulled out again. So do we, so the point at that point is not to beat ourselves up mm -hmm. is to just go back inward and continue to work and forgive yourself and forgive yourself. But that person Amen. displayed red flags. It doesn't matter. You're going to find people in, trust me, I've been there. You're going to find people in your life that don't display red flags and you think they are perfect for you until they get you. Mm. Hmm. I, I don't think there's that. anybody Are those the perfect perfect for there's you. There's no, there's no perfect. Yeah, there's, there's no, no one perfect. person that there's should satisfy no every single. But thing I do you're believe. But Cheryl, like, how do you when you talk to people who are on their journey yeah. and 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 who stumble and yeah. fall and maybe yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, what is your advice? Well, I love listening uh, to everyone's conversation. I just want to say it is about loving ourselves and forgiving ourselves and not being too hard on ourselves and. That fear, it's here to teach us and we're going to grow and we're just going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to have amazing experiences or not so amazing experiences, but it's how we kind of handle ourselves or come out of it. You know, I mean, we're, we might get scathed. We're going to get our feelings hurt, but we still want to learn the kindness that we have for ourselves. We still got to be gentle as we walk on this planet, you know, it's not easy sometimes. And uh, there are a lot of great people out there that may just, uh, you know, stumble along the way and we get hurt by it in some way. But it is about all about, as Gayan said, it, it's a process, right? It's an unfoldment of continually loving more deeply. We mm -hmm. learning how to forgive more deeply. Each time we do these things, we're becoming more of ourselves. We're putting more of ourselves um, in front of us. We're learning more about ourselves and that's what it is. And that's what I like to do is just to help empower people that they are extremely sensitive. People are so much more sensitive, I think, than we give ourselves credit for. Mm -hmm. And that the heart and the gut, we do know, we have these instincts, you know, that we do know, we just want to trust that. That's really the big thing, right? Is about trusting ourselves. Right, Joe? Yes. Do you know what she's talking about? Can you hear her? <laughs> Can you hear her without that? <laughs> Not anymore. Okay, well, she was just saying it's about listening to that gut, our instincts. Oh, absolutely. And, and yeah. I find that your instinct will either tell you yes or no, if you really listen. That's all. That's it. And you have to exercise that instinct muscle because, you know, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to keep believing mm -hmm. it and testing it out and, like, mm -hmm. 
you know, I, I didn't like him the minute I saw him. I'm not going to say who, Dr. Fauci. But, um, <laughs> you know, I just, <laughs> Me too, I just felt know. that. Yes. Immediately the first time I yes. ever saw that man, uh -huh. I don't like him. Same here. Yeah, sometimes we get, and, and you know, how it is with instincts, you could maybe just get a stomach ache and you don't know why. or But definitely be sensitive about the energy you pick up from people. Absolutely. I mean, you always have to be aware. I mean, I'm very sensitive. <clears throat> I am very emotional. And, you know, certain people find that, you know, like not so cool, you know, and, and I, you know, and I'm like, you know, and they all like freak out when I'm emotionally or sensitive or I cry. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, you know, and it's like, I'm, and I, I found myself, you know, throughout my life with people like that apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And now I'm like, I mean, I still get to the point where, you know, if it means if someone means something to me, friend or, or whatever, it bothers me, but I'll still stop. And I'm thinking that like, I said, and then I just get angry, you know, going, because this is me, you know, except me. It's not me. You can't handle the shit because you've got some fucking baggage, right. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you expect me to act to protect what your fear and your baggage is. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do that anymore. Well, good. Don't. <laughs> good. Yes. Because I think people like gaslighting others. I think people also have maybe some personality disorders. And it's just, um, unfortunately, we get the wrath of all of that as well because we're sensitive empaths. So, oh, look at you. You're, you're crying or you're upset about something. You're, you must be crazy. But see, I think everyone, and Cheryl, correct me if I'm wrong because mm -hmm. you know this more than I do. I think everybody is can be a sensitive or is i think we're i i think personally we're born sensitive empaths i think you know it, it's that's that's we come in with innocence we come in i disagree okay let me finish <laughs> i think we do i think what happens is i think depending on you know whatever their past is i think that plays a role um you know i also know you know people like you said that have you know personality disorders and stuff like that that's mm -hmm. chemical you know no one no one wakes up and says, I'm going to be a sociopath. I do believe it's something's wired wrong and they just, some of them become murderers. Some of them become this. I think, I think I personally don't think people come. I don't, I'm sorry. Maybe it's because I'm so Pollyanna and I see the good in everyone, mm -hmm. you know, until they prove me wrong. But I don't think people come on. I think people come on this earth with a clean slate and of, of innocence. And I think it's just corrupted. Unless there's some DNA shit, you know, that happens, you know, chemically, physiologically, you know, that you can't. I believe some people are born evil. Um, that would be the psychopath. And the sociopath yeah. it learns it. Well, in it's like, especially time. if you're a little baby and say by age one or or two you're you're doing something to an animal like you're burning terrible. a cat yeah but, so, but what i'm saying is <laughs> exactly see, those are the people that i really think there's some chemical imbalance i don't think you think it's chemical but i think it's actually on a soul level i think they're bankrupt i think that there i believe that there is evil in the world but maybe you know you're not wrong for believing that, that everyone comes into this world innocent i believe a lot for the most part people are good and i believe that racism is is generally taught yes um and i don't believe anyone's born um with those ridiculous notions but i th and i think that a lot of it is is how you're raised but then there are some things that are so disturbing um that only the only thing that makes sense in my brain is that there's evil there that there's unexplainable evil that or bad seed or something that got in there that yes you know that no one knows that's a oh, great i mean cheryl topic. would know cheryl yeah. Do you think? <laughs> Hi, I mean, Cheryl. Again, she deals with the spiritual level, yeah. and she deals with that. I mean, there's. I mean, I'm not. She would know. She would know mm -hmm. that. Do you think there is, like, when people are born, there is evil? They're born evil on a soul uh, level. Well, I I feel that the soul is. Uh, I feel that uh, that people come into into as you know, people come into lifetimes with lessons to learn, mm -hmm. and we do operate as a collective uh, consciousness. I do believe people through their past life experiences and what have you, they may come into this world. Um, 
maybe not at first exhibiting uh, something dark or evil, if you want to call it that. But yes, I do think that they probably have something within them that brings that out mm -hmm. more and more. Um, so yeah, I do believe that. Uh, but I don't believe that. Um, I just feel like everyone is here. If we kind of take um, right and wrong, black and white out of the picture, for example, and try to approach everything with a loving attitude, knowing that these people, or there are some people definitely that are, are evil because we are all light and dark, right? We're mm -hmm. all light and dark. And we really just want to show our light while we're here on this planet. And it, you're right. Sometimes it gets out of balance with people and they're just way out in left field, you know, and it can't be anything other than evil or dark. That's just, like you said, our terminology on how we explain things. Yeah, to explain to ourselves that like, there's no mm -hmm. other – sometimes I just say that because I can't, as a person that's not that way, I can't picture anything. Look, I'm the queen of horror movies. I love them all. Yeah. Um, yeah, and especially like the spirit ones and – and by the way, I just like, saw like, uh, yeah. I, I just saw The Conjuring Three. Um, How was that? Oh. I, I I liked it. I did like it. It's scary, but not as scary as Conjuring One. Mm -hmm. um, Conjuring Two, don't bother. Um, it's kind of boring. But if you like The Nun, then you should watch The Nun, which is part of the Conjuring series. Um, <laughs> I saw that. Um, I saw The Quiet Place Two. Not as amazing as Quiet Place One. Um, but I do, and I love that spirit stuff. I will watch those things. And my, my mother says, because I watch it with a friend of mine, like, how do you sleep at night? Oh, yeah. I can't watch those things. And oh, no, it's, no. But it's because I believe that exists. I, I do believe that exists. Well, yeah, you're interested in it. You, you like I always, I've, it. Oh, God, I always like the occult. I've never practiced it. What's the occult? The occult. Um, the scary movies, spiritual, oh, okay. like that sort of shit. Um, but witches, witches, mm -hmm. um, spells. Again, never practice it. It just fascinated mm -hmm. me, and I just wouldn't put past that that doesn't exist. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, some of like, honest to God, some of these movies, like mm -hmm. it's based on true events. Now, granted, a lot of them are you know heightened up, but shit happens. It's true. <laughs> and, and, and I have a brother that's a sociopath, and oh, I often God. wonder if he's a psychopath or not. Mm -hmm. But ever since I was born, he was always just very mean to me. And, you know, he's still in trouble now as an adult. But so so go, going on your topic, Mara, you know, was he born that way or did he learn it from observed behavior mm -hmm. that kind of got into what, what Cheryl's now saying? Everyone does have a light and dark. Was it a decision somewhere along the way? I don't know. I think maybe because now we're going at, now we're going to psychology, which none of us are, you know, obviously equipped to discuss. I have a question for Cheryl when you when you're done. But the thing is, with like the light and the dark, the decision, like you know, sometimes, and I don't know how. I, I think it's because they're wired. I mean, you know, I get great pleasure with you know doing something for for the elderly or for animals that's where i get gratitude from i feel good and I, so i think they're wired because they obviously get pleasure from starting like, fires starting fires or <laughs> skinning a cat you know <laughs> shit like that yeah. go ahead joe um cheryl yeah that's so, the whole nature versus nurture um you know conversation mm -hmm. is it environmental you know is it is it, you know, no from the family? Is it the way they were brought up? Is it the environment they were raised in? And can they be um, rehabilitated? It can be both, you know. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. So, Cheryl, um, years ago when I was meditating, um, I, it, I felt seriously like I was passing through uh, uh, some kind of plane where it wasn't safe. Mm -hmm. It felt not right. And I had to... I had to not stop there and keep on going any comments on just based on what you just finished saying about you did stop yeah. there joe or you no, didn't I did not. oh you kept I going like yeah but i, I she bought another ticket the other way i felt mm -hmm. i just felt <laughs> things around that weren't really mm -hmm. that you know well and great. sometimes well look you know it, it's a big universe out there as they say it's a big sky there's lots to see and lots to maybe not see and you know, whether it was a fear or just something foreign that you weren't quite 
that, that just scared you, but maybe had you stayed or something, maybe it would have changed and, or, or not, you know, but it does, but that's our, it's wherever we are at that point in time, maybe in our own evolution, maybe someone else would have come along and said, Oh, great. This feels great. But, you know, for you at your, in your lifetime, that, or in that experience that you had at, at that particular time, um, that was your lesson because see, after all these years, you haven't forgotten that. That's what's amazing is that those memories that we remember from our dreams or our meditations, that's the lesson. That's what's teaching you that, yes, it's an energy that you're learning about. You're learning about density and light, power and no power, you know, um, resistance and non-resistance. So, I mean, I think you're asking me, is it real? Do dark energies exist or something? I think that's what you're asking me. Is that yes, right? because yeah. like I'm of the belief of that everything is actually uh, all energy is towards growth and well-being. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. now when I'm hearing, you know, um, uh, the conversation go that, yeah, maybe there is just evil that exists. I'm going, oh, well, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I, 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 I have to say probably all the above is correct answer. Anytime we have lots of questions about things, we go, well, is it this or is it that? I always want to say it's probably all the above. It's mm -hmm. probably a little bit of everything. You know, I do think kids are born in this planet, pure light. My God, they're pure light. They just got here. And I do believe maybe as they grow something, there's some influence, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, within them without them some maybe some behavior was reinforced and it starts going the wrong way and then it and then it's a negative behavior so um you know i just believe that there's all types of energy out there you know and that's why you always want to ask for the highest good to come you always want to ask for the highest good to come for you and for all that are involved you know you can open yourself up to connect to anyone if you want but wouldn't you rather want to connect with the highest possible guides, angels, and you know, what's all that's the best for you. So we can learn, we're learning no matter what. It's just that we have that choice to learn. Uh, and, and so why don't we um, manifest with intent? You know, we want to always manifest with intention. Cheryl, I have a question for you. And, and when you've, you know, done your readings and, and your mediumship and you bring in, you know, the spirits, have you ever brought in a mal, mal, whatever that word is, a, a bad spirit in? Yeah. No, uh, no, because um, I'll tell you what, sometimes, um, uh, no, I have not as a short answer. I have never malevolent. brought in anything malevolent. other than That's the love. one, malevolent. 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 I have never brought in anything but pure love and light because um, it, because the universe is uh, is so intelligent. It's really quite an intelligent universe. And I think sometimes we're afraid of it maybe because of society or the movies, so to speak. And, uh, but I do believe that the intelligent, you know, there's such a divine love there that sometimes we just, you know, it, we need time to comprehend that. Uh, but no, I have never brought in anything negative before. Um, but I always focus on light you know i focus i meditate mm -hmm. just like you guys i focus on light i leave a lead a balanced life i try to treat people with respect the same as you guys you know not judge you know we're all doing our best here and reach for that highest good you know she uh, thinks a lot of us <laughs> yeah right yeah a lot of you <laughs> I, I, I wish i could say i'm all those things but <laughs> you are those things. i do my best you are those things. well thank you um everyone um sean if you want you can start queuing up the music low and then go in um out because we're almost done but i want to thank you all um for joining us um here at the united broadcasting network it's between the sheets um, we are on the first and third Friday of every month, except this month. Um, the next show will be June 25th, which is the fourth. Uh, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and please, um, you know, listen to the show, share it. Um, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be everywhere. Um, on Facebook, uh, Between the Sheets podcast, the Facebook page, and the YouTube is uh, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. It is so nice to see everybody. Oh, it's so, so nice. It's so amazing. Yes, it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll, I'll hope, maybe I'll try and get a guest 
um, for the end of the month. We'll see. It depends on if I have a, my, how my work schedule is and how mom is. But I uh, thank you again for everyone for your well wishes and prayers and, and keeping and holding a, a beautiful white light around my mom. Um, but uh, we'll go around the room. Cara, what can they find you? I'm on Facebook, of course, Cara Noble. Uh, Cara Noble Voice also is my voiceover site. Mara? I'm also marashaneart.com. I'm Instagram, marashaneart, and Facebook, marashane. Tanya, Tristan, Roxanne, whatever. Tanya Biatch. <laughs> you can find me, <laughs> Roxanne Rosen, on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and then our favorite person on the other end of the line, Cheryl Murphy. Uh, guys, you can reach me, or uh, y'all uh, can reach me on uh, mediumcheryl.com <laughs> on Facebook. See, y'all works. And Twitter. <laughs> what was that, Cheryl? Face, Facebook, Twitter? Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Medium Cheryl. And I have that event coming up June 22nd. It's a fundraiser going to the Trevor Project. So yes. And how do they find it on trevorproject.org or your, your site? It, find it out on my upcoming events on my website. Awesome. And then we have to thank Alan, um, who behaved himself. He really did. This whole time. Oh, and then his owner. Uh, Joe, Joe Papadonitz. Joe, where can people find you? Um, in Santa Monica or sleeping in the back of my truck in Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Sean. Thank you very much for, thank you, Sean. for taking good thank care you. of us. Of course. And you guys everyone, are awesome. thank you very much. Um, you know, if the only thing I have to say is it's all about love, love, love. It really is. If you think about love, love yourself, you can apply that to all facets in your life. And if you stay within that, you know, the journey is going to be hard. But it always, just think about it, breathe and love. It always brings you back to the focus and to the medium. And you can't refocus yourself. I mean, you can't go out there and accomplish things without refocusing yourself. So do a recharge. Um, we'll see you back here in the studio in two weeks. Thank you so much. And as always, namaste. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you, Gan. Are we off?